All right, y'all. So you're going to get the benefit of my bad experience right now. I'm running a sound grid network here, and I recently upgraded my Mac from Catalina to Ventura. And when I did, I had nothing but glitches on my sound grid network, so audio problems. Of course, I checked all my software, and everything is able to run on Ventura on the M1 Mac. So, you know, I did my due diligence and I still ended up with this problem. Now, the one caveat I'll make is I am using an unsupported network adapter because it's a laptop and it only has <laughs> Thunderbolt 4 ports on it. Um, I had to figure out a way to get wired Ethernet uh, to this particular laptop. And uh, I'm using a unsupported configuration. <laughs> Uh, that's according to Waves, and I have no problem with that. Basically, what I've got is a Thunderbolt 3 to Thunderbolt 2 adapter, and then connected to that is a Thunderbolt 2 to Gigabit Ethernet adapter. Both of those are the Apple adapters. Now, the Thunderbolt 2 to Gigabit Ethernet adapter is supported by Waves uh, to run SoundGrid, but of course, that's only if it's connected to a Thunderbolt 2 port on the actual computer, not through... A Thunderbolt 3 to Thunderbolt 2 adapter. So there you go. That's my unusual configuration for you. Now, I know a lot of people are using that setup uh, to do AVB, uh, and apparently it works for that too. And of course, it did work for me in SoundGrid up until I upgraded to Ventura. So that's when the problem started. Of course, I tried everything uh, that I could think of, you know, reinstalled all the wave software. It had, it had been on there through a couple of updates and I thought, well, I'll clean it off and reinstall it. And that didn't do anything. Maybe Pro Tools needed to be updated or, or, uh, maybe it was resolved. I don't know, but none of that stuff made any difference. I can monitor my unified network and look at traffic. And, uh, by the way, my wave sound grid is on a separate VLAN. So there's no other traffic on this network segment. So it wouldn't be any kind of saturation. The most I do is 32 channels back and forth between the two computers. You know, I was at my wit's end. I didn't know what else to do. Of course, I knew I could buy a different adapter, but I didn't know if that would solve the problem, right? It could have been a software issue as far as I knew. And so here's what I had to do to get it working. First, I called Waves and they said, go buy a supported adapter. And I said, look, you know, I've been using this. It's been working fine up until I updated this software. What's going on? And they said, well, the only thing that we can think about is maybe the security policy. Now, frankly, I don't remember changing that. But somehow, when when we checked the driver, um, we could see that it was running in user mode, which is the lower of the two security profiles that you can use. You can do reduced security or full security. And so if you want to check whether your sound grid driver is running in user mode or in full security mode, uh, here's how you do that. And we go to applications, wave, sound grid, launch sound grid control panel, and then we can look at the version number. If there's a small U after it, we're running in user mode. If there's not a U, then we're running in kernel mode. And here in a minute, we'll look at how to change from one to the other. Now, of course, when I checked my machine, it was running in user mode. So it had the little U after the uh, version number of the driver. Now, like I said earlier, I don't remember changing that from full security to reduced security in the startup security utility. Um, so I don't know how it got changed. I went and checked my Mac that I migrated from, which is a 2016 Touch Bar Mac, which is when they introduced the T2 security chip and some of these new security policies started to be implemented. And that one didn't even have the option to change the security policy in the recovery. So I'm not sure really exactly what's going on, but uh, nonetheless, I was able to fix my problem by changing the security policy from reduced to full security on my machine. What you're going to see in the next couple of shots is me booting into recovery on this 2021 Apple Silicon M1 chip uh, MacBook Pro. So first thing you got to do is hold down the power button until you get the prompt for the recovery. 
So once that loads up, we're going to see the hard drive and then we're going to see options. We'll choose options and then click continue. And then after a little while, we'll get into the actual recovery area. Now, this is where I got the language selection screen and had a big uh, delay, but I'm not going to show you that because uh, most people probably won't see that. All right. So now that we're in Mac OS recovery, we can go up to the utilities menu and from there we'll choose startup security utility and in there we'll choose security policy and here we can choose between full security or reduced security now mine was in reduced security and the box that says allow user management of kernel extensions from identified developers was checked so i went the other way so now i'm on full security um, you know, once I did that, I rebooted the computer. So another interesting thing to note in my situation, I mentioned a language prompt. That language prompt that I saw before the recovery screen fully loaded is not supposed to be there. I waited on that screen for like 20 minutes. I, event I even called Apple about it. And after, I don't know, several attempts of getting stuck on that screen, eventually I was able to get past it and into recovery and of course there's a language selector inside the recovery operating system that you can change the language and it looks totally different than the one I saw so what I understood after talking with Apple even though they were kind of theorizing as to what was going on in other words not an absolute confirmation but they think that language screen I saw and that boot up cycle you know, going into recovery, but not fully being in recovery, that was a remnant from the previous recovery, which came from who knows where, right? So I'm telling you all this to say, you know, this stuff sometimes is beyond any recognition or explanation. Um, the, the honest truth is sometimes nobody knows what is going on? Even the people that designed and built the stuff, because they can't possibly test all the various combinations of things. So, you know, they test certain things that they think are the most likely use cases for people, but that doesn't mean they test everything under all conditions. And so I think it's more common than we like to believe that we see things that are unique and haven't been seen before and according to the manufacturers or the software developers shouldn't be seen and yet there they are and so that's how problems are discovered and identified and that's why software is beta tested but again that beta testing is only going to catch things that are uh, happening within the beta test group right so and of course usually they have very carefully controlled protocols you know, what system you're using, what software is on that system so that they can have some way to actually track what's happening, right? So if you're using a system that doesn't align with those things, um, you may have an issue like what I had that's really unexplainable. Uh, nobody can really say what happened or why it happened. They're just like, well, is it fixed? Yeah, it's fixed. Okay, well, see you later. And, you know, there's no like... There's no satisfaction of figuring something out because we really didn't figure anything out. We got it to work, but we have no idea what happened, why it happened, or even why it's now working. It just is, and we should all rest comfortably, right? But but that makes me really uneasy, right? Because I've been seeing this for a long time. Uh, you know, it's scary. It's scary what's happening out there in the software world. And here we go. We're going to turn it in. <laughs> We're going to turn on the AI and have artificial intelligence everywhere. Everybody's talking about this AI stuff like it's some new thing. And I'm thinking to myself, man, artificial intelligence isn't new. I remember when I met my wife and she said my intelligence was artificial. Okay, so I'm ahead of the curve. All right, you guys, I just want you to know that I've been using artificial intelligence my whole life. And we can't even honestly understand how the systems that we use every day work sometimes so it's kind of a scary world we live in uh but hey you know might as well laugh and have fun because there's nothing we're going to do about it we're going to go the way we're going to go right so anyway <laughs>
It's uh, it's crazy. Uh, honestly, it really is. Hopefully, uh, for those of you who use SoundGrid and maybe you have a Mac and maybe you don't use SoundGrid, but you have some weird behavior on your Mac, you may try changing the security policy one way or the other and back again and see if that doesn't uh, help you. It really shouldn't break anything. But again, no promises here <laughs> after that little rant, right? All right. So, hey, like and subscribe to my channel. Uh, if you got something out of this video, or even if you didn't, give it a thumbs up anyway. I mean, why not, right? It doesn't hurt anything. And, uh, you know, click that notification bell if you want to find out when the next video drops. All right. I'll see you soon, guys. Take care. Have a good day.